Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Sean Madden. I'm a product manager at uh, Piston Cloud Computing. I uh, started out in a sales engineering role the past couple years and just recently moved into product. Um, so thanks for coming. Uh, this talk is about zero to OpenStack in uh, 15 minutes. So what that means for us at Piston is we want to get you from your bare metal servers to running a uh, complete infrastructure in about 10 to 15 minutes. It goes well beyond that as, as well, because what we'd like to do is not only get your cloud up and running, but anything that you have on top of that, we want to make sure that's easy to install. So we want to automate everything if we can. That means everything from uh, um, the installation, the scaling out of your cloud when you want to add servers, the scaling in of your cloud, when you want to do um, updates and upgrades, say you're going from uh, Havana to Ice House, Ice House to Kilo and beyond, or, or Ice House to Juno, we want everything to be automated and easy. We want these things to be very simple. And even third-party integration. So, you know, we bring up our cloud in about 15 minutes, and then on top of that, you want to run your platform as a service from Cloud Foundry or Staccato or AMP, or you want to run some SDN on top of that from PlumGrid or, or Juniper or OVS. We want to automate those as well so that this whole concept of 15-minute install extends just beyond the infrastructure. So let me just, before I get into the demo portion of it, let me just give you a bit of a background on what Piston does and how we get to this whole thing of a 15-minute install. So if you look at this block diagram here, this basically shows what the Piston architecture looks like. On the bottom, you have these commodity servers, x86 servers. Uh, they, they're they're hyper-converged from pretty much any vendor. So if you want to use Supermicro or Quanta, or if you're a Dell shop, HP shop, wherever you want to get your servers from, we're very hardware agnostic. and Basically, every server in our architecture runs compute, storage, um, and networking. So we fill them up with drives. We have a couple of CPUs and uh, some NICs. And these are the cloud nodes, as we call them, that are going to run your cloud. Uh, what we've done on top of that is uh, we've um, built a, a micro operating system where we basically taken Linux, stripped out everything that we need, that we don't need, and all it does is run OpenStack. So we install that into a RAM disk on every server. So it, it, it's stateless. We never install anything on your drives. It's completely stateless. On top of that, we have our runtime environment, which does a couple things for us. Um, number one is it's our cloud orchestration framework. So we can take you and do this automated install. But it's also our high availability framework as well to make sure that your cloud stays up and running 24-7. We detect things like server failures, um, services not running. We, we can migrate services around and make sure your cloud is running 24-7. Uh, the three other boxes you see are the storage, compute, and networking. So on the storage side, we use Ceph as our um, storage backend for the block and object storage. Uh, so, so you have a lot of control over how you want your, um, your storage to be done. We distribute that completely across the cloud, doing 3x three three replication of all your data. Uh, for compute, we run KVM as a hypervisor. We have some extensions on there called virtual memory streaming that allow for some deduplication of RAM. And for the networking side, we offer um, many different options from the, the original Nova network that came original with OpenStack, and as well as uh, PlumGrid, NSX, Contrail, OVS integrations. And on top of that, what you get is, is built-in OpenStack. So we do run OpenStack. We're running on IceHouse now. Um, you know, so all, all the projects within OpenStack, all the main projects. And we sort of pick and choose depending on what our customers want, which of the other projects we, we want to add in there, like people want database as a service, or Solometer, or Heat, or these kind of things. We sort of pick and choose what we want based on demand. So just looking a little bit more at this uh, Nulture architecture concept, so you'll see that there's a, a rack of servers, commodity gear. Um, every server can run anything, compute storage networking in every box. So we don't have these separate things, these separate tiers, where we have compute boxes and separate storage boxes and things like that. Everything can run anywhere. It makes for a very um, easy to install base, but a very way to, for example, if you want to re replace servers, you basically scale in, pop a server out. If you want to do maintenance on it, you do maintenance on it, put it back in. So very, very simple. Uh, just really quickly on the, on the storage side, uh, I mentioned Ceph is our back end. I think people have probably heard of, of Ceph before, so this takes care of both of our block and object storage. 
um, on the back end. We do offer ephemeral storage as well for people that want local storage. And we, we have a very neat way that you can completely customize your storage if you want to. So you can put in different flavors of SSDs and SATA drives, different speeds of those drives, and you can decide on your own how you want those drives to be allocated for block storage, object storage, or even ephemeral storage. And as I mentioned on the networking side, we support um, networking from various vendors, from OVS to, to Juniper, uh, PlumGrid, um, so we can support those as well, and also trying to make those into an automated, uh, easy install. Um, part of the way that we do this, to talk a little bit more specific about um, the, the secret sauce, if you will, in Piston, is this uh, run Moxie runtime environment. Um, so what that does, we, we built our own uh, cloud orchestration framework. So basically, when you rack and stack your servers, you have a boot node in there. You basically take our software and plug it into a boot node. You power on the boot node. Our software goes out. We, we detect all the servers that are attached, all the cloud nodes that are attached. We network boot them. We um, detect what hardware it has in there. So we can detect what, how much RAM is in the, all the uh, servers, how many drives and what type of drives are in there, what kind of compute power you have in there. And then we install our software in the RAM disk, install Ceph distributed across, install all the OpenStack um, components. And all this is hands-free. So this is the basic zero to OpenStack in 15 minutes. And then on top of that, we've been working with our partners on doing the third-party integrations to be able to make installers for things like I mentioned, the, the platform as a service on top, or any of the, 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 the SDN providers that we've been working with to make it easy install um, all the way through. So again, with this micro operating system, we call it IOKane is kind of our marketing name for it. But it's just a hardened Linux distribution, completely stateless, that we uh, run in RAM, less than 100 packages. And all it's built to do is run OpenStack. That's what, what it's meant for. And the, in terms of our Moxie, this is not only the cloud orchestration framework, but it's also the piece that we have. It's our high availability framework. So when there are problems in the cloud, when a server goes down, hey, no big deal. Whatever services we're running on there, we just migrate them to, to some, some other server. The cloud keeps running. So the goal is your cloud is up and running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's kind of the, the little bit of background. Let me get into the demo a little bit. I'm going to demo. I have, I have a screen capture I made. I think the, 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 the guys from Tesora made the great comment of not trying to de depend on the Wi-Fi here to show you. So I put together a screencast of the uh, cloud orchestration. So when we first boot the cloud, I'll show you the scale in and scale out of the cloud as well. So let me get that screencast up. That doesn't look very nice. All right, hang on one second. I'm not getting mirror mode here to work. I don't have any jokes, otherwise I tell a joke right now while they get this. Uh, Here we go. All right. Thank you. 
All right, so this is the part that we call cloud boot. Uh, what cloud boot is, this is where we first install the cloud. This is where you've racked and stacked your servers, you've plugged them into your network, you've powered on your boot node, and then what happens is we'll get the DHCP request from the BMC um, in the servers, and as you'll see, we'll detect those servers, we will power them on through the network, and once they're powered on, they'll, they'll boot up, they'll go through their BIOS, and then we will um, do the auto detection of all the, uh, the hardware components. We'll install our software into the RAM disk, and then we wait about 10, 15 minutes, depending on uh, the, si the speed of your network, the number of servers you have, all this happens in parallel, and you'll, you'll see. So you'll see that we're in this provisioning full state. That's basically where everything is provisioning. We're installing all the OpenStack components, and then once that's done, you'll see that all these servers will go into the ready state, and you know, you'll know that your cloud is up and running. And this process is about a 10 to 15 minute um, process. So you see the servers are ready, and now you can go click on access the dashboard, put in your credentials, and you're in the PIS and OpenStack dashboard. Um, scale out. So scale out works in a similar way to the installation. Basically, when you're ready to scale out, you add some servers, you attach them to the network. Again, we auto detect them. You don't have to power them on. Uh, when you're ready, you can click host available to add. It's select on, on the servers that you want to add into your cluster. And all this happens behind the scenes. So again, your cloud is still up and running. All your workloads stay intact. Your, the people that are using the, the, the cloud can still keep doing all the work. We um, install our software into the RAM disk on these, this new server or servers. You'll see that um, there's a lot of provisioning and changes that happen among the other servers have, as things get reconfigured, but there is no downtime to be able to scale out your cloud. Uh, once the configuring is done, you'll notice that the servers will show up in the ready state again, and you'll just con continue on, on using your cloud. This is the, little, the, the finalized state that it goes through, and then they'll all say ready, and you're still up and running. But while this is happening again, your, your, your cloud is up and running fully. Scale in is a very similar process, and that's what I'm going to show you next. So say you want to remove some hosts, you're not using them anymore, or you want to do maintenance on them. So you go to this host tab, you select the host or host that you want to remove from the cluster. It starts an evac process where on that server or servers, we take any virtual machines that are running on there, we'll migrate them off. It's a live migration, so the work, the work can still happen with that VM. Anything that's stored in Ceph will get migrated as well, so those copies will get migrated to other servers um, if they need to. And the scale-in process happens, so all this happens in the background. Um, there, there's zero downtime for this as well. And you'll see that any effect that happens on other servers, you get, a, you get it all shown in the, uh, in the dashboard. It shows you what the states are. And then once that's done, your cloud is back up in the ready state. Again, your servers are. But again, all this happens in the background. All this happens with zero downtime. And you'll stay up and running. And about five more seconds, you'll see that this is uh, done. Now, I've sped up. In all these demos here, I've kind of sped things up. It really doesn't happen quite as fast as you see here. But um, it all happens in the background. And depending on how many server servers it is you're scaling in or scaling out, um, we'll, we'll determine the amount of time it actually takes. And about three more seconds, and we're ready, and we're running. So these are just three of these sort of automated pieces that we do. Um, one of the other ones that we do, which is very important and a big value add in, in our product, is doing live updates. So as I mentioned before, if you need to go from a Grizzly to Havana, Havana to Ice House, or even um, doing upgrades of your product because there's some security patches that have come out. All the live updates happen um, without any downtime as well. We do rolling reboots of all the servers. So we start with one server, do an update. You know, we, we migrate all the VMs and all the data off onto one of the other servers. We'll do an upgrade on that server, reboot it, and do that for all the servers in the cluster. So again, there, there's zero downtime for upgrades as well. So the whole goal of this from zero to, to OpenStack in 15 minutes is to make sure that, number one, it's very easy for all this installation, all this configuration, all this management to take place. Number two, anything that we add on top of our product, whether it's platform as a service or we're going to move in, as we move into containers and other areas, that anything that gets installed is, is also a very easy, quick install. And to make sure that your cloud and your, <coughs> excuse me, your cloud is up and running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's what I had for the presentation and for the demo, and I'd be happy to open it up for any questions. I have about five minutes left.
on my time. Yes. It is not. So, so, so the question was, are, um, we, we, we do have Linux, a, 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 a Linux operating system that we've created, and the question was, is our, um, is our secret sauce open source? At this point, it's not open source. It's, you know, we, we kind of evaluate as time goes on whether or not we're going to open source things. Right now, we, we have not open sourced that part of our product. Yeah, so, so ROS runs in the RAM disk, and then, and then so you can put in your own image. Once the, the cloud is up and running, people go in a glance and put whatever, you know, whatever Linux or, or Windows images they want, and then they can spin up their VMs from those images. So if you have Ubuntu, Red Hat. Yes, yes, and ROS is still running in in, in RAM. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know that I've seen any any problems there. I, I haven't I haven't heard that per se, but as far as I know, I haven't seen any any problems with, with people running Linux flavors of any any type. Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Is it possible to map different services to different? Yeah, so the, uh, right, right now, not, not at, at cloud install time or cloud boot time, we can't do that. Yeah. Yes? So you, you simplify the problem by saying you've got sort of homogenous hardware. Mm -hmm. What would be the typical use case on top of those hardware? Right down the middle, what's the scope of Sure. So we're seeing a lot of DevOps use cases. Uh, it's fine. Like, that's, that's kind of where our sweet spot is. So for people that are doing these DevOps, um, deployments where we're seeing like that is like the biggest use case that, that, that we're seeing from most people like we have a lot of you know we have people on both sides we have like service providers over here we have large enterprises on this side where we make up some of our our use cases but right down the middle is this really devopsy um, focus so what they're running they're running a lot of their apps or running a lot of their own own internal in-house apps and they have this sort of uh, continuous integration, continuous of development, where they're they're starting on a in a PLC. They move that from a PLC to a dev environment, move from a dev environment into production, and we kind of see that happening a lot. Correct. Yes. Yes. Do do we use the? Yeah, so for, for main cloud management, um, you can do it all the three ways. So some people like using the dashboard. So we do have Horizon that's there. Uh, some people use, use the command line interface to, to do it as well. And then a lot of people use the APIs directly. So we still offer the three main, um, main entries into OpenStack that, that, that are available. Other uh, questions? Okay, well, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, Piston Cloud Computing, we have a booth right, right over there. So feel free to stop by. Thanks a lot.